Hi parents, it's Elmika Henderson here with another webinar for our distance learning parent webinar series. Um, this one is on managing your child's behavior at home. You know, one of the biggest challenges that parents are saying that they're facing right now is managing difficult or defiant behavior on the part of the children. You know, whether they're refusing to put on their shoes or do their schoolwork or throwing full-blown tantrums, um, you can find yourself at a loss for an effective way to respond. You know, for parents at their wits end, behavior therapy techniques can provide a roadmap to calmer, more consistent ways to manage problem behaviors and offers a chance for children to develop those, those skills that they need to regulate their own behaviors. To understand and respond effectively to problematic behavior, you have to think about what became, came before it as well as what comes after it. There are three important aspects to any given behavior. The antecedent, which is the preceding factors that make the behavior more or less likely to occur. Another more familiar term for this is triggers. Learning and anticipating antecedents is an extremely helpful tool in preventing misbehavior. Behavior, the specific actions you're trying to encourage or discourage. Consequences, the result that naturally or logically follow a behavior. Consequences, positive or negative, affect the likelihood of a behavior reoccurring and the more immediate the consequence, the more powerful it is. The first step in a good behavior management plan is to identify target behaviors. These behaviors should be specific, observable, and measurable. An example of poorly defined behavior is acting up or they were being good. You know, that's very general and we don't really know what the behavior actually is. A well-defined behavior would be they were running around the room, which is an undesired behavior, or starting homework on time, which is a, a desired behavior. We want to try avoiding using good or bad descriptors for behaviors because we don't want the children to think that they are good or bad because they're demonstrating these behaviors. Antecedents come in many forms. Some prop up desired behavior, undesired behavior, and others are helpful tools that help parents manage potentially problematic behaviors before they begin to bolster desired behaviors. Here are some antecedents to avoid. Assuming that expectations are understood. You know, don't assume that kids know what's expected of them. You have to spell it out. Demands change from situation to situation, and when children are unsure of what they are supposed to be doing, they're more likely to misbehave. Calling things out from a distance. Be sure to tell children important instructions face-to-face -face and make sure that they, you have your, their attention when you're telling them the instructions. Things yelled from a distance are less likely to be remembered and understood. Transitioning without warning. Transitions can be hard for kids, especially in the middle of something they are enjoying. Having a warning gives children the chance to find a good stopping place for an activity that, and makes the transition less fraught. Asking rapid fire questions or giving a series of instructions. Delivering a series of questions or instructions at children limits the likelihood they will hear answer questions and remember the tasks and do what they've been instructed to do. Here are some antecedent, antecedents that can bolster good behavior. Be aware of the situation. Consider and manage environmental and emotional factors. Hunger, fatigue, anxiety, or distractions can all make it much more difficult for children to rein in on their behavior. Adjust the environment. When it's time to work, for instance, remove distractions like video screens and toys, provide snacks, and establish an organized space for children to work and make sure to schedule in some breaks. Children's attention is not infinite. 
Make expectations clear. You'll get better cooperation if both you and your child are clear on what's expected. Sit down with them and present the information verbally. Even if they should know what's expected, clarifying expectations at the outset of a task helps head off misunderstandings down the line. Provide countdowns for transitions. Whenever possible, prepare children for an upcoming transition. Let them know where there are, say, 10 minutes remaining before they must kind of come to dinner or start their schoolwork. Then remind them when there are two minutes left. Just as important as issuing the countdown is actually making sure the transition happens at the stated time. Let kids have a choice. As kids grow up, it's important they have a say in their own scheduling. Given a structured choice, like do you wanna take a shower before dinner or after, can help them feel empowered and encourage them to become more self-regulating. Not all consequences are created equal. Some children, some are an excellent way to help structure and help kids understand the difference between acceptable behaviors and unacceptable behaviors, while others have the potential to do more harm than good. As a parent, having a strong understanding of how intelligently and consistently used consequences can make all the difference. Here are some consequences to avoid. Giving negative attention. Children value attention from the important adults in their life, so much so that any attention, whether positive or negative, is better than none at all. Negative attention, such as raising your voice or spanking, actually increases the bad behavior over time. Also, responding to behaviors with criticism or yelling adversely affects the children's self-esteem. Delayed consequences. The most effective consequences are immediate. Every moment that passes after behavior, your child is less likely to link that behavior to the consequence. It becomes punishing for the sake of punishing, and it's much less likely to actually change the behavior. Disproportionate consequences. Parents understandably get very frustrated. At times, they may be so frustrated that they overreact, and that's okay. A huge consequence can be demonizing, however, for children, and they may give up trying to behave at all. Positive consequences. When a child dwaddles instead of putting on their shoes or picking up their blocks, and in frustration you do it for them, you're increasing the likelihood that they will dwaddle again next time. Consequences are more effective when they begin with generous attention to the behaviors you want to encourage. Here are some examples. Positive attention for positive behaviors. Giving your child positive reinforcement for being good helps maintain ongoing positive behavior. Positive attention enhances the quality of the relationship, improves self-esteem, and feels good for everyone involved. Positive attention to brave behavior can also help attenuate anxiety and help kids become more receptive to instructions and limit setting. Ignoring actively. Now this should only be used with minor misbehaviors, not aggression and not destructive behavior. Active ignoring involves the deliberate withdrawal of attention when a child starts to misbehave. As you ignore, you wanna wait for the positive behavior to resume. You wanna give positive attention as soon as the desired behavior starts. By withholding your attention, until you get the positive behavior, you are teaching your child what behavior gets you to engage. Reward menus. Rewards are a tangible way to give children positive feedback for desired behaviors. A reward is something a child earns, an acknowledgement that they're doing something that's difficult for them. Rewards are the most effective, are most effective as motivators when a child can choose from a variety of things. 
extra time on the iPad, a special treat, or something like that. This offers the child agency and reduces the possibility of a reward losing its appeal over time. Rewards should also be linked to specific behaviors and always delivered consistently. Be clear. Establish which behaviors will result in timeouts. When a child exhibits that behavior, make sure that the corresponding discipline is effective and relatively brief and immediately follows the negative behaviors. Be consistent. Randomly administering consequences when you're feeling frustrated undermines the system and makes it harder for the child to connect the behavior with consequences. Set rules and follow them. If you're giving your child a timeout or some other consequence, there should be no talking to the child until you are ending the timeout. Timeout should end only once the child has been calm and quiet briefly so they can learn to associate the end of the timeout with the desired behavior. Return to the task. If the timeout was issued for not complying with the task, once it ends, the child should be instructed to complete the original task. This way, the kid won't begin to see timeouts as an escape strategy. By bringing and practicing behavioral tools, management at home, parents can make it much more peaceful place to be. Another way to manage your child's behavior is the idea of holding space for your child. Holding space for your child just means being present and allowing the child to experience whatever emotion they're having while remaining invisible. This isn't about ignoring or punishing your child for the, the tantrum, but it's about awareness, acceptance, and self-control. Here is a, a short video that I want to show you that demonstrates what holding a space for your child means. Pinch of tobacco in my pocket. I'm not gonna roll it, no. I'm not gonna smoke it till we staring at the stars and the rockets, twinkling in the silvery night. Two sips of whiskey in the flask, but I'm not gonna drink it. I swear I'll make it last till we drinking out of the same glass again. And though the sun may be washed by the sea Then the old will be lost in the new Well, four will not wait for three For three never waited for two And though you will not wait for me I'll wait for you It's an unspoken heartbreak, a heartbroken handshake I take with me where I go Three words on the tip of my tongue Not to be spoken or sung Or whisper to anyone Till I scream I'm at the top of my lungs again And though the sand may be washed by the sea Old will be lost in the new. Four will not wait for three. For three never waited for two. Though you will not wait for me, I'll wait for you. Oh, oh, and oh, oh, oh. I'll wait for you. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. And I wait for you. Oh, oh. Got a 
pinch of tobacco in my pocket. I'm not gonna roll it, no. I'm not gonna smoke it till we're staring at the stars and the rocket twinkling in the silvery night. So holding space for them allows them to feel grounded and gives them the courage to manage things on their own when they are ready and able. As you noticed in the video, the parent didn't try to intervene, they didn't try to calm the child. Um, maybe they tried to calm the child and it didn't work, but they just allowed them the space to have the tantrum in a very safe way. You know, they kept them from hurting themselves and they were shielding their feet from hitting the floor. Um, but this is what we can do as parents. We can hold that space for them to have the emotion that they're having without trying to stop them or telling them that it's wrong to feel that way. You know, tantrums are just a communication and a way that a child expresses themselves. But by holding space, we're allowing them to find ways that and strategies to kind of express that emotion in a really safe and healthy way. So this brings us to the end of our, our webinar. Um, I thank you all for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions or if you need any further assistance with any of these tips that I offer today or in ways to manage your child's behavior, please reach out to me. You know, my email is ehenderson at aisbmolly.org. Um, I also have office hours on a platform called Doxy where I have a waiting room for parents and you can come and talk to me about anything um, that's going on right now. But again, thank you so much for um, everything that you're doing and carrying the load of managing this distance learning with your children at home. You know, we um, really appreciate it. You know, we can't do this without you. Um, but thank you so much for attending today and or watching the video and um, if there's anything you need, please let us know. But I hope you all are well and stay safe. Um, but I'll see you again soon. Bye.